Are you struggling to keep your blood sugars under control? Maybe you've recently found that you have type 2 diabetes, but struggling to keep your blood your blood glucose under control with diet and medications alone. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at something known as ketosis prone type 2 diabetic or flat bush diabetes, which is a less common form of diabetes, but it is important to understand as insulin deficiency can be just as problematic as high insulin and high blood sugar. So if you like this kind of information on diet, nutrition, health, hormones, and just trying to get a better understanding of what's going on with your body, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. Let's check out this topic on flatbush diabetes or ketosis prone type 2 diabetes. So in this video, we're going to look at what is flatbush diabetes, also known as ketosis prone type 2 diabetes. Traditionally speaking, there are only two types of diabetes. There's type 2 diabetes, which is non-insulin dependent. You typically do not need insulin with this type of diabetes, and it comes on slowly over time as you get older. Over the course of, say, 5, 6, maybe even 10 years, gradually blood sugar levels are getting worse and worse, so there's some obvious lead up to it. Whereas post with type 1, it is insulin dependent. So you need insulin, it comes on at an early age and typically comes on suddenly. In recent years, the distinction between type one and type two is being a little bit blurred and the contrast between the two isn't as sharp as we once considered it to be. Some type one diabetes have some insulin resistance, also more common with type two, and then some type two diabetics end up needing insulin and therefore having some of the elements of type 1. This is important to look at because when you're getting diagnosed with diabetes, if you're only looking at the blood sugar numbers and hemoglobin A1c, you may miss the fact that you actually do need insulin. And this, in some cases, can be critical for getting you back on track with your blood sugar without actually needing insulin later on. That is the phenomenon that occurs with this flatbush diabetes, also known as ketosis prone diabetes, and it does go by a few other names as well. In sub Saharan in Africa and Africa, this type of diabetes is very common. And one of the distinguishing factors is the need for episodic insulin dosing. These patients often present and look as if they're type 2 diabetic because they tend to be overweight and they do have high blood sugar, but there's one key distinguishing factor, and that is they have high ketones, sometimes even have ketoacidosis. This is a phenomenon that happens most commonly with type 1 diabetics and very rarely with type 2. The thing is, these people with flatbush diabetes or ketosis prone diabetes don't have any autoantibodies to their pancreas and therefore they wouldn't technically be classified as a type 1 as, as that is a autoimmune type of diabetes. So since they don't have autoantibodies to the beta cells in the pancreas, they're not classified as type 1. However, they do need insulin because they are lacking insulin when they initially present for diagnosis. Once they have insulin and the blood sugar levels drop, oftentimes the beta cells in the pancreas will start to reproduce that insulin and the need for external insulin injections goes way down. In these cases, it is thought that the beta cells are temporarily paralyzed by the really high blood sugar levels, and therefore they're unable to produce insulin. Prior to this treatment, their cells are basically starved for glucose and they start breaking down fats. Instead, those fats are used for fuel. Because fats turn into ketones, that leads to the elevated ketones and sometimes ketoacidosis. That's where the name ketosis prone type 2 diabetics come from because they look like type 2 diabetics even though they produce ketones and need insulin. The Flatbush name comes from a series of cases that was discovered in East Flatbush in Brooklyn, New York. This type of diabetes is definitely more common in Africa and African Americans, Latin Americans, Native Americans, and in parts of Asia. It is seen in Caucasians as well, it's just not as common. Treatment for this type of diabetes depends on severity and can include things like insulin injections, diet, medication, and lifestyle modifications. Once the glucose levels drop, the GLP-1 agonists are often used to encourage the pancreas to keep producing insulin. So again, this just illustrates the need to properly diagnose what's going on in the body. When you do have blood sugar elevations, make sure you're checking your insulin levels as well, because if those are low, you're going to be fighting an uphill battle with management of your blood sugar levels. All right, that should give you a better understanding of what flatbush diabetes is and the need for 
checking insulin and blood sugar in the presence of high blood glucose levels. If you have questions about this topic, drop it in the comment section. There's lots of more subtle iterations of this. As I said, I've seen cases with low insulin and high blood sugar, similar to what's described for ketosis prone type 2 diabetes. If you think this might be going on with you, I'll be curious to hear about it. Drop it in the comment section. If you have questions, leave those too, and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.